We talk college football, we get winners, and we talk to a man who has been as red hot as, as anyone out there. I tweet out his picks, and they always seem to come home. He is Kenny White, at KYD Vegas on Twitter. Look at him looking dapper in that shirt and tie. He's ready to win you <laughs> yes, he some is. money. I like winning money on the weekdays, Kenny. So there is a game that is a little stinky to me. I don't understand why Miami right now is laying two and a half points. And when I smell something, as Sarah can attest to, I embrace the stink. I love the stink. They just got humiliated at home by Virginia Tech. Now they're laying points against Virginia coming off a bye. Kenny, walk me off the ledge or agree with me. Where are you on this Virginia-Miami game on Friday night? Well, good afternoon. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you off the ledge, of course. I, I don't want you to you know hang out there in that. I don't like heights in the first place. So let's get off the ledge, get to inside the building, and and make some money betting. Um, you know, it's it's a good spot for Virginia. Obviously, extra time to prepare. And whenever you got an A A plus coach like Bronco Mendenhall, he's a defensive guy. He's gonna definitely scheme in this game. Now we're gonna get a new quarterback too. Uh, Miami's named Nikasi Perry, the starting quarterback. He was their starter last year but really was so inconsistent, uh, very inaccurate quarterback, you know, throws the ball everywhere. Uh, they're, they're just unsettled in Miami. So the extra time to prepare is worth at least two and a half points to me. And then also rookie head coaches, first year head coaches, there's so much to do. Manny Diaz used to be just in charge of the defense. Now he's in charge of the entire store and that t sometimes becomes overwhelming and not really knowing what to tell the players. When you lose straight up as a favorite and you have five turnovers, and that's the biggest reason why they lost, sometimes you don't know what to tell the players. And if you if you blame it on the players and not blaming it on the coaching staff, things turn badly. So it, it's I don't know which way this is going to go, but more than not, 60% of the time, it's going to go bad for Miami. So that's worth another point and a half for me. So I'm looking at Virginia, a four-point favorite here. Very surprised that Miami is the favorite in the game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the points here with the Cavaliers. Kenny, you already know a game. I'm going to start you off with my Florida Gators after a huge win are now 13 and a half point dogs in Death Valley. 102,000 people going to be at Tiger Stadium. Is UF going to cover this spread or not, Kenny? Just break it down easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how could I How could I doubt uh, your Gators last week? And Auburn just looked so good at Texas A&M. But, yeah, teams look differently week to week. And Florida was very well prepared. You know, this one, some interesting stuff. First of all, Dan Mullen looks like he's the real deal. 13-6 and six with a tie. 65% uh, covering the spreads now as the Gators head coach. But LSU, Eddie Ogeron, he's been just as good. He's 16-7 and seven now against his uh, SEC opponents. Last 23, he's 6-2 and two ATS versus top 25. One problem, though, he's just 1-2 and two straight up versus the Gators and 0-3 oh ATS against the Gators. Just has not done the job there, and I would hate to lay that many points. LSU wins this game. Sorry, Sarah, but... I think the Gators will cover the cover the point spread, so at least maybe you can make some money on the game, even though your team doesn't win. <laughs> Kenny, I'll take that. At KYD Vegas on Twitter, he joins us every Thursday to look at the week of college football. It is a loaded, loaded slate, and it starts noon Eastern. If you're out where Kenny is, out in the desert, it's going to start 9 a.m., the Red River Shootout, one of the best rivalries in all of college football. It's at the Cotton Bowl, the fairgrounds. They will split it right down the middle uh, with, your, with Oklahoma and Texas fans, and Oklahoma is laying... 10 and a half, 11, depending on where you look, a double digit favorite. And uh, Kenny, Tom Herman historically is great as a dog. I think he's 13, three and one as a dog, as a head coach. So where are you looking in the Red River shootout, Oklahoma, Texas? Yeah, you're, you're right on. He is 13, three and one, but I broke it down a little bit differently because a couple of those games, he was a one point dog, a one and a half point dog, a two and a half point dog. So I looked when he was getting a touchdown or more, nine and one ATS Ooh. when he's getting a touchdown or more. And out of those 10 games, seven of them went under the total. You know, these two head coaches are, are now in their third year, but they're facing each other for the fourth time. They played last year in the, in the conference championship game and Oklahoma got their revenge from the regular season. They went on to the final four. And, and right now though, Texas now has the revenge. So. 
That's worth two and a half points in this situation. And it's got to be worth two and a half points. Tom Herman's nine and one ATS record getting seven and a half or more. The talent difference, I, I think, is 10 points. Mm. But when I factor those two uh, situations in, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make Oklahoma just a five point favorite in this game. Mm. So yeah, taking the eleven here. And Tom Herman, he is a really good head coach because when you look at where coaches were before they the, what the program was like before they got there, and then what happens after. Houston was in disarray when Tom Herman showed up. He goes thirteen and one. He goes a big big year, a second year, and then he moves on to Texas. And as soon as he moved on to Texas. Houston went straight downhill once again, and now they've had to hire a new coach since that time. Dana Holgerson comes in. So Tom Herman, to me, outstanding job there. I think he's doing a great job rebuilding Texas as well. So this guy knows how to coach. You really have to use that uh, that dog trend he has going. And in the in the ten in the uh, the ten games, I said seven and three to the under of the three games that Oklahoma and Texas have played with these two head coaches. The average posted total is just 66 and a half, and we're looking at 75 and a half. So I think it's a correlated parlay. I think it's worth Texas a straight bet, but I also think there's a a small parlay involved. You'd want to bet Texas to the under as well. Kenny, I'm trying to make some money tonight, and that will start with Syracuse visiting NC State. NC State, one of the best teams in the ACC, I believe, with rushing. Are you laying the four and a half points with North Carolina, or are you taking Syracuse here? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is one that I, I, I love the Syracuse team and Tommy DeVito. Everything I read about him in the spring was he was just ready to step in and be the guy. And uh, Dino Babers, I think, has done a very nice job at Syracuse. But for some reason, they have not played well at the beginning of the year. And they got beat up by a Maryland team, just completely thrashed by Maryland. They Syracuse looked slow. Maryland looked fast. And so it's hard for me to judge where the Syracuse program is right now. Dino Babers just hasn't done a good job. Dave Dorian on the other side, seven years now at NC State. Um, I think he's done an amazing job, 40 and 25 overall. Uh, he has a winning, winning point spread record. But again, I just don't think he has that much more talent. So I can't really give you a winner in this one. I, I, I made North Carolina State four in the game, the total 54. I lean a little bit towards the under because it is a big game for both teams, but really it's not a, n- neither one is a play for me. Talking once again with Kenny Whitey joins us every Thursday in this spot at Vegas on Twitter. Kenny, a game that is uh, interesting to me is Wisconsin at home going up against Michigan State, and they're laying 10 and a half, the Badgers are. And uh, this is a Michigan State team that heading into last week saying, oh, you can't lay that many points, you know, against Michigan State and Ohio State won and covered uh, relatively easily. So is this too many points for Wisconsin or are are they just on another level right now than a Michigan State team? I don't think they're on another level. And I'll say, I raised my hand. I I had Michigan State plus the 20 and a half or 21. (laughs) I I thought it was too high. Uh, Did catch the game under, thought it was a better underplay than than the side was. So that, that came through because Second half, basically nobody scored except for Ohio State did put a touchdown on the board. Michigan State defense, they've dropped from, I had them fifth in the country when I rated these teams out in the spring to now number 17. So a pretty good drop off of the defense. They just have not played up to, I don't think, their ability. So they've underachieved a little bit. I also have hope that they can turn that around. I think this is a good under situation. I don't really trust either quarterback throwing the football. So I think the winner of this game is going to be the team that runs the ball better. And obviously we know Wisconsin with Taylor, best backs in the country in the offensive line. They're going to be able to hammer that uh, Michigan State defensive line the entire game. And I think it will pay off for, for Wisconsin handsomely late in the game. I'm going to pass on the side. Um, if you're going to bet Michigan State, I think you bet them in the first half. But I like the, I do like the game under. And then if you do watch the game, as I said, Michigan State, watch for their, their offensive line to wear down Michigan State defense. And maybe Wisconsin would be worth a bet in the second half of this football game. Kenny, under a minute here, the Penn State Nittany Lions 5-0 and are playing Iowa. I know you told me you like the games with closer spreads where you could see the value. So where is the value on this matchup? I really was impressed with Iowa last week versus Michigan. I thought Iowa outplayed them. I bet Michigan and was, was afraid the entire game, but crunching the stats afterwards, Iowa should have won that game by 10 points. Uh, Penn State has run up big numbers against some weak defenses. 
uh, and, and against a, a decent defense in Maryland, but they ran points up in, in a meaningless situation. The one team they were tested by was Pittsburgh. Iowa's defense is better than Pittsburgh's. I have Iowa's defense number seven in the country. I have Penn State's defense number four in the country. Expecting a very low scoring game. Think it's a correlated parlay low. Iowa plus the points to the under. He's the man. We love talking to him. Kenny, let's get some winners. You always give them out. You're the man. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.